I love that saying when you're on an airplane and it says, put your oxygen mask on first, right? Think about that. You put your oxygen mask on first, and then what's the next thing you do? Then you put it on other people. Once you get your oxygen mask on, then you could say, okay, I'm safe. I'm secure. I'm feeling better. I've been geeking out on history lately because, I mean, if you're really honest, who's concerned with the state of the world right now? Just a little bit. Who's got a little concern the way things are going in your, you know, I know we got people from all over the world here. Here in America, things are a little cray cray right now, but it's kind of like that everywhere, right? But when you understand history, it can take the emotion out of it and allow you to see it through the lens that it really is. And, and one thing I have to say um, that I believe is one of the greatest saviors. And I, and I, I have to be an optimist, an optimistic uh, thinker. But what solves problems more than anything is unity, not division. And I think the way things have been going over the last, well, you know, I'm, I'm only 53. I say only, but uh, I have to say that. Uh, is I've never seen anything more polarizing to push us apart, to feel separated, to lose the momentum we had of, of being united as one human race, right? And in our thinking and having the ability to agree to disagree, right? I can remember being a kid that, you know, when I was a kid, I can remember different parties and, and you know, whether you're Democrat, Republican or liberal or conservative, I remember really good debates that allowed us to find a connected center. And that's not where we are right now. We're really divided. Like you're in one camp or another, or at least, or at least that's the way they want us to see it. Because that's not the way I feel. And that's not the way most people I spend time with feel. But what I've seen through history is how this is fixed or how it falls apart is the more divided we are the more easy we are for things to go in the wrong direction. And I love being a part of groups like this because I think our collectiveness, our coming together, our looking through the lens of people that we disagree with and finding common ground and finding common ground for our families, finding common ground for our children, finding common ground for our safety, finding common ground for our growth and our ability to be the best version of ourselves, being the version that God designed us to be or the universe, whatever you believe. I think when that happens, even in groups of several thousand like us, I think that's where things start to change. The reason I love being here and seeing different faces from all over the world and all over places and all over backgrounds, we have this community. Look at this amazing chat that we get to connect through Zoom and I get to see thousands of you at once. We can be this collective group and between what I do and what Tony does and UPW and Date With Destiny and, and the, the, you know, the, the mastermind groups and the impact accelerator event we're doing soon and all the things we get to do we are blessed to see hundreds of thousands of people a year and all we see is unity and strength and people coming together and wanting to be a better version of self and want to look through other people's glasses and want to be connected and i think that's how we change the world it doesn't matter if pascal thinks one thing and cheryl thinks another we that's what makes this world so great is different opinions but we don't have to be divided I'm not trying to give a, a lecture and I'm not running for president, or, nor would I want to be. But I have children, I have people in my life that I love that are younger than me and I'm sure we all do. And I think the way we solve things is to, to come together. And I think another way to solve things, and I really want you to hear this, is go get massively successful. Make so much money it's stupid because money changes things. It's just a fact. Money is leverage. Money is not, if you use it to be greedy, take all the money for me, not help anyone. Boo-ha-ha. Like that's, I was trying to do boo ha it didn't come out so well. But that's evil. But being successful allows you to help flourish the economy, of course, but it also gives you leverage to help, to donate, to fix, to serve, to bring people together, to help make effective change. If you don't think money solves problems, then first off, I don't believe you've ever given enough away. Think about that one. If you don't think money solves problems, you haven't given enough, to, enough away. When money is something that's on your list of things to worry about, and it should be. We can't do anything without money. We can't just sit at home and manifest everything to go great in our life. We'd love that, but they'll come throw you out of your house or your apartment. They'll take your TV. They'll take your car. We got to pay the bills, right? When money isn't as much of a worry, 
you get to focus on the things that are really important. You see, I watched my mom and dad my whole childhood. They didn't even realize it. Now I'm older, I didn't realize it as a kid. That money was their number one thing. I lived in a trailer park with my mom. We couldn't even afford the rent. We got evicted from the trailer park we lived in and moved in with my grandmother. My mom worked three jobs. Money was always the thing. She was a slave to it. She didn't have a degree. My mother's the most beautiful woman on the planet, had dyslexia really bad and never really got that fixed. So she always considered herself not that smart. So she would never go for a real job, like something that filled her heart. She would go for cleaning houses and painting houses and cleaning up uh, salons and cutting hair when she could on the side. And like she did all these things and none of those are disrespectful. She worked, right? But money was her thing. She didn't have time to work on her personal growth or work on her emotional intelligence or overcome the, the things that may have went a little sideways as a kid and try to heal that child that was scared. She didn't. My father was the youngest of 12, was beat physically really bad to where that, that's why he didn't stay married long. That's why he had 11 brothers and sisters and didn't talk to any of them. He was in a physical, physically abusive relationship and never took the time to heal that or forgive himself or forgive his father, right? Because all he worried about was making the next dollar, right? I get that. Maybe that's one of the reasons I'm successful because I saw both my parents struggle so much with that, that it's like, I want to get that crap out of the way. Like they never had time to work on themselves, right? And I want to tell you as a person who didn't come from anything and, and legit went to school without lunch money some days, that I always thought money was gonna heal me. I just thought, I'll get more successful, get more rich, and I'll be good. It's kinda true, but not really, not in the way I thought. You see, I was running away from a painful childhood. My kids aren't having a troubled childhood, at least I don't think so. They might tell their therapist that in 20 years, but I think I'm doing a damn good job, right? They could, be, they could have therapy, but I'm hoping not, right? But I hope they're still massively successful. I don't want you to think you have to have a tragic childhood to be successful. But all of us are running away from something. Could have been a bad relationship or a job that totally sucks or it's robbing your soul. So we're all moving away from something. Um, but here's what I know. I ran away from that painful childhood and I figured money, money, money. And when I was in my late 20s, I retired my mom. When I was in my 30s, I retired my dad. So I got the money out of the way for them. Greatest thing in my life, I still, for, since I was 27 years old, I've sent my mom a check every single week since I was 27 years old. I sent my dad a check every single week since I was 32 years old. I just bought my mom a brand new house. I just put my dad in a, in a place that he absolutely loves. I buy him both their cars. Love that. I've been able to do great things, but it didn't heal me. It didn't allow me to dive into the shit that went sideways when I was a kid. But here's what it did though. This is the part I want you to hear about success because a lot of people confuse this and if you're a little confused about money if you're a little guilty to make money if you're a guilt, little bit guilty that you're here that you want to make more money I got to get that crap out of your system because that is just a lie someone else downloaded into you I want to tell you when I was able to get money so it wasn't the front and center worry of my life guess who was left standing in the mirror just me I didn't have to worry about the rent I didn't have to worry about the car I wanted I had to worry about my kids only person standing. I couldn't use that excuse of, I'll worry about this later. Let me just slam a drink and keep moving harder. Let me just do this or let me be distracted. When I was in my 20s, I dated obsessively. I, I went out and partied a lot. Like I always found a way to like hide the crap that was living inside and most of it was through work. If, some, if I was going to say I was an aholic of something, I was a workaholic for sure in my 20s. And then guess what happened by the time I was 30, 35? I started getting successful. I started paying, I paid off all my debts. I retired my parents. I get in my 40s and I'm like really successful. And I don't have to think about money anymore. I don't have to worry about it. I worry about my companies, my family and all that stuff. And the only person left standing in the mirror was me. What I'm telling you, what success can do, it can allow you to spend the time on the things you really need to do that you're avoiding through work, you're avoiding through cocktails, you're avoiding through surfing on the internet, avoiding because you binge out on Netflix, avoiding through sex, through any, anything. There's things that we can put out there to hide and mask. And when you get money out of the way and you get to look at you in the mirror, you could say, now it's time to be a better version of me. And if anybody would have ever told me that in my 20s, I'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? If I get money, I don't have to worry anymore. 
And when I got money out of the way, the worry went up because I had nothing to worry about anymore except looking in the mirror and go, this guy's pretty screwed up. Like, you made the money, now let's find a way to be a better human. And when I got to work on me, I went from being in my previous relationship, a good provider as a husband, an amazing dad, but I wasn't amazing. I got to work on me and now I'm married to the love of my life and I get to know what real love is, real compassion, real intimacy, real connection, real friendship. I get to be a dad that's completely connected to my children in a way that I thought I was, or, but in a whole different world because I got the coaching. I spent the money, I spent the time. I interviewed people who are good parents and who have great relationships. I got to heal the child I was. I got to forgive my dad all the way, completely forgive my dad. My heart is complete, there's no animosity anywhere for my dad. I won't die with any regrets. I, don't f I think of all the time, what regrets would I have? How do I solve them now, right? And it gave me a freedom that I never realized existed. So if you want something today to fight for, to fight for the person you're supposed to be, you're meant to be, fight for that. Fight for the healing that you could be. And then here's the cool part. Then like when I got that, and listen, I also know how many of you are successful in here. Please, I'm not talking to you like you have nothing and I have, that's not what I'm saying. But I wanna tell you this evolution is I got money out of the way. I started seeing success and then when I started becoming a better version of me, I got in better relationships, I was better to my team, I became a better trainer, I became a better human. Then all of a sudden when I got my own money out of the way, I love that saying when you're on an airplane and it says put your oxygen mask on first, right? Think about that, you put your oxygen mask on first and then what's the next thing you do? Then you put it on other people. Once you get your oxygen mask on, then you could say okay, I'm safe, I'm secure, I'm feeling better. What's up, what's up? Hey, don't forget to look at the action steps we've posted below. They are the perfect way to take your success, abundance in this crazy world to a whole nother level.